Hello everyone, I'm Paula and our Bible reading today is from 1 Peter 5 verses 5 to 7. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Now, over to Duncan. Thanks, Paula. My name's Duncan. I'm one of the pastors at Wood Green. Let's pray as we come to God's word together. Heavenly Father, give us humble hearts as we listen to your word now. Cause us to marvel at the perfect humility of Jesus. Expose our pride and help us to see what lives of humility look like for us this week in relation to each other and in relation to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before I get going, I want you to do some work. I want you to have a think about two questions for a minute or so. And if you're with other people, you can chat to them as well. Two questions for you to think about and chat about for one minute. Are you ready? Firstly, what is humility? And secondly, what is pride? What is humility? What is pride? You've got one minute, off you go. I'm back. Have you cracked it? What is pride? What is humility? Hold on to your answers because we're going to come back and think about that in a couple of minutes. The main thing that Peter very clearly tells us from this part of God's word today is very clear and very simple. Be humble. Don't be proud. Be humble. Clothe yourself with humility towards one another and humble yourself under God's mighty hand. We're going to see how humility is our greatest friend and pride our greatest enemy. And then think about what it will look like for us this week to live lives of humility. What is humility? I don't know how you answered that a moment ago, but it is possibly the most misunderstood Christian virtue. Humility is not hiding your talents or constantly criticising yourself. So picture a mum who spends five hours baking an exquisite, elaborate, delicious birthday cake for her daughter. And then when one person says, that's an amazing cake. How did he do that? She says, oh, it was, uh, it was nothing. Uh, anyone could do it. I just threw some ingredients in a tin, bunged it in the oven, and out came this edible replica of Hogwarts. Or picture a footballer who scored a match-winning hat-trick and when interviewed after the game says, I didn't really play that well. I should have had four or five goals and the goals I did score, I didn't actually connect with that well. Humility is not hiding your talents or constantly criticising yourself. But biblical, biblical humility involves at least three things. Firstly, and crucially, depending on God's mercy. Humility means depending on God's mercy. It means crying out to God, please treat me better than my sins deserve. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, Jesus tells a story of a religious leader, a Pharisee, and a tax collector who go to pray in the temple. 
The religious Pharisee prays, God, I thank you that I am not sinful like other people. And the sinful tax collector simply prays, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus declares to the listening crowd, truly, I tell you, it was this sinful tax collector, rather than the, rather than the proud religious leader, it was this tax collector who went home justified before God. For all those who exhort themselves, Jesus says, will be humbled. But all those who humble themselves will be exalted. So humility means depending on God's mercy. And it also means, secondly, accepting God's will for your life and listening to his word. Peter has already set out in his letter how we can expect to suffer as followers of Jesus and how that is part of God's plan for our life to refine us, to make us more like Jesus, to get us ready for an eternity with our Saviour. And if we can understand that even our toughest circumstance is caused by God's mighty hand, that will stop us from being tempted to wander away from him in times of trial. In Isaiah, we read, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2, we read God say that these are the ones I look on with favour, those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. Humility involves listening to, cherishing, trembling at God's word. We laugh at the sitcom character who tries to put together furniture without referring to the manufacturer's instructions. Yet we so often do that with God's word, the Bible. We take the instructions of the maker of the universe, the very wisdom of God, and we try to model on through life without it, let alone trembling in awe at it. Humility involves depending on God's mercy, listening to God's word and accepting his will for our life. And thirdly, humility involves practical service of others. Rather than scrambling for power and prestige and position, Humility involves serving others, preferring the needs of others to our own, putting other people before our own interests. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus says that the Gentile earthly rulers, for them greatness is about lording it over the people, exercising their authority in harsh ways. And Jesus says to his disciples, not so with you. If you want to become great, you must be a servant of all. You must be a slave of all, he says to his disciples. And he says, and that's true for me as well, the Son of Man, Jesus himself, came to serve, not be served. Jesus came to serve by giving his life as a ransom for many. So what does humility look like? Well, it looks like practically serving others, putting the needs of others before your own, listening to God's word, accepting his will, and depending on his mercy. That is biblical humility. What about pride? Pride is the opposite of humility. God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. The first mark of pride is depending on ourselves, not on God. When Israel had been rescued from Egypt, God says to the people through Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 8, God says to the people, be careful to remember. Make sure you never forget that it was me who rescued you from Egypt and brought you to the brink of this prosperous land. So that you never say to yourselves, it was my power and the strength of my hand that brought us to this place and made me this wealth. In our pride, we sometimes depend on ourselves for our daily bread. We believe that our money, wealth and possessions has been earned by us rather than given by God. Pride says, be a self-made man, be a self-made woman. Humility says, I'm a created creature dependent on my creator. Pride says, you can be anything and anyone you want and achieve anything you dream of. Humility says, I'm a created creature dependent on my creator. The first mark of pride, depend on ourselves. Secondly, the second mark of pride is rejecting God's word 
and ignoring God's will. Rejecting God's word and ignoring God's will. As former Serbian president Slobodan Milosevic sat in his jail cell awaiting trial for war crimes and crimes against humanity, he listened to Frank Sinatra's famous song, My Way, on repeat with its chorus line over and over again, I did it my way. But it's not just popular with war criminals. It is the most chosen song for UK funerals in the UK year after year. I guess it's an appropriately honest anthem for a society that has largely, largely rejected God's word and ignored God's will for our life. You see, pride can so easily seduce us to thinking that we're capable of navigating solo through life. Pride blinds our eyes to God's will and pride deafens our ears to God's word. And a third mark of pride is serving ourselves rather than others, using other people for what we can gain from them rather than putting their needs before ours and instead becoming self-seeking, self-promoting. Pride is an ugly form of self-reliance that distorts our relationship with God. It has been described as the mother sin, a mother sin that gives birth to all other sin. It's at the root of all our rebellion and turning away from God. So we've started to understand what humility is, what, pri what pride is and how they differ. But if we really want to see a beautiful portrait of true humility, we need to look to the Lord Jesus. Jesus is the embodiment of humility. He lived a life dependent on God. He listened to God's word, he accepted God's will, and he served others. Throughout Jesus' life, he depended on his heavenly Father in prayer. Prayer was an immovable fixture in his Google calendar. Jesus, when he was tempted in the desert by the sly words of the devil, he chose to listen to God's words instead. The eve of his death, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, contemplating the agony that lay ahead, Jesus prayed, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus stooped to enter our creation. It's the ultimate act of humility, the creator entering his creation to save his created creatures. But then on the cross, he serves us even more as he gives his life as a ransom for many. That idea of the ransom just shows us how much in need of being served we were, how unable we were to help ourselves as Jesus pays our ransom payment, our debt of sin that we've built up against God, that we can never pay ourselves, Jesus pays it in full on the cross as he serves us. And so the primary reason why we humble ourselves before God is that God first humbled himself for us. And we are called, therefore, to follow Jesus' example of humility, not just for the sake of it, but we are called to follow Jesus' example of humility to point people to Jesus' ultimate act of humility on the cross. We are to humble ourselves before others, to point to Jesus' humble service of us. Apparently, one of the unexpected side effects of the lockdown is going to be, in years to come, a high rise in the number of people complaining about back pain, shoulder pain and neck pain. Because suddenly millions of people have been working from home in less than ergonomic environments, slouched on the sofa, tapping away on the laptop. You see, posture matters. And our posture of either pride or humility to God matters to God. We see this throughout scripture. Think of Daniel chapter 4 and King Nebuchadnezzar, the most powerful man in the world, who in his arrogance ignored God, claimed that he'd done everything in his own strength. God humbled him, brought him low. Or picture Jesus in the Gospels. Compare how differently he treats those who come to him presuming on themselves trusting in themselves alone. Compare how he treats those proud people to those who come to him begging for mercy and crying for help from God. And Peter knows 
that if this band of scattered, suffering Christians he's writing to is going to keep going with Jesus through trial after trial, he knows it is essential that they continue to act humbly to each other and walk humbly before God. So let us consider what will it look like for us in these days and weeks ahead to be humble towards others and to be humble before God. Be humble towards one another. Let me read the start of verse 5 again. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Richard helped us to think last week about the responsibilities of elders, church leaders, towards church members. And now as Peter transitions to this topic of humility, he reflects on the responsibilities, first of all, of church members to their church leaders. They're called to submit to their church leaders. Just as Peter says we're to submit in various other areas of life that he's laid out earlier in the letter, so church members are called to submit to their church leaders. And can I say on behalf of the elders at Wood Green, we so value the encouragement, support, love and prayers of you church family, especially over these rather strange recent months. And it's also probably worth saying that within a church family the size of ours, there's likely to be a range of views on how we as a church should respond to this pandemic. We'll be consulting with you as a congregation in the coming week or so. But whatever's decided, even if it's not quite what you would have done, let's show grace and patience with those faced with making these difficult decisions. But it's not just to church elders that we need to show humility, it's actually to everyone else in church, to every brother and sister in your church family. To everyone in the Wood Green Church family, you're called to clothe yourself with humility in your relationship with them. So we're not just to put our own needs first, we're to put the needs of others first. So this week, can you think how you could show love, encouragement, support to your brothers and sisters in Christ? Is there something you could do to encourage and strengthen someone in your growth group this week? In your speech, as you talk to others in the church family, will you show humility? Will you be willing to say, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm sorry I was wrong. Will you show humility in your speech? One of the great things, one of the great pri privileges I have of working in the building during the week, especially when uh, pre-lockdown things were happening every day, I get to see lots of humble service going on behind the scenes. I see people photocopying craft for kids group. I see people preparing the music for a Sunday, arranging the chairs for Sunday, uploading talks, to the website doing unseen administration and church family whilst we're not physically seeing as much of each other as we're used to let's continue to keep clothing ourselves in humility to each other by serving each other in any way we can and ultimately that is only going to be possible if we first humble ourselves before god verse 6 humble yourselves therefore under god's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. This is an invitation to renounce self-reliance, to confess our pride and to depend wholeheartedly on God, knowing that our humble state won't last forever, but will one day be glorified with Jesus in heaven. And Peter throws in one more reason for us to live humble lives this week, and that is verse 7. Did you notice this? Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now you might think, what does anxiety have to do with humility? Well, here's the answer. We're told God cares for you. He's shown that by sending Jesus to die on the cross. He cares for you and so he invites you to cast your anxieties, your burdens to him. And he says, I'm here to help. Don't say no. Don't spurn my offer of helping. Because let's be honest, there's a lot to be anxious about at the moment, isn't there? There's our health. Will we get the virus? Or will we get some other illness that needs treating, but we can't get into hospital because they're so busy fighting COVID? Or our wealth, unemployment's increasing, job security is waning. Will we have enough money to survive? Our family, we can't get to see our older relatives. 
and then parenting's getting tougher. What's going to happen to my children if schools don't open again soon? There's exam results. There's church life. There's so much to think about, to potentially be anxious about. I don't know if you can remember back to the very first family slot of our first YouTube service at the start of lockdown. And Emma had all those different shopping bags representing different burdens, different anxieties that we carry around. It's exhausting, it's debilitating to carry these anxieties around with us all day, every day. Jesus says, have the humility to depend on me. Whatever it is you're worrying about, health, wealth, family, children, exams, loneliness, cast these anxieties onto me. Jesus says, come to me, you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Today, Jesus invites you to surrender the pressure you feel, to surrender feeling responsible for every part of your life. Commit them instead to him in prayer rather than facing the pressure alone yourself. Jesus says, let me do the heavy lifting. Put these anxieties into my mighty hand. This week, cast your anxiety onto Jesus. In humility, depend on God, not yourself. Listen to God's word, accept his will. And having humbled ourselves before God, let's look to each other in humble service. Let's pray now that we would do that.